Organizational behavior topics have clearly been of interest to many people for a long time. Let's briefly review some history to better understand the origins of the scientific study of OB. Formal study of organizational behavior began in the 1890s, following the industrial relations movement spawned by Adam Smith's introduction of the division of labor. In the 1890s, Frank and Lillian Gilbreth and Frederick Winslow Taylor identified the positive effects of precise instructions, goal settings, and rewards on motivation. Their ideas became known as scientific management and are often considered the beginning of the formal study of organizational behavior. Scientific management is based on the belief that productivity is maximized when organizations are rationalized with precise sets of instructions based on time and motion studies. The four principles of Taylor's scientific management are the following. Replace rule of thumb work methods with methods based on scientifically studying the tasks using time and motion studies. Scientifically select, train, and develop all workers rather than leaving them to passively train themselves. Managers provide detailed instructions and supervision to workers to ensure that they are following the scientifically developed methods. They divide work nearly equally between workers and managers. Managers should apply scientific management principles to planning the work, and workers should be actually able to perform the tasks. Although scientific management improved productivity, it also increased monotony at work. Scientific management left no room for individual preferences or initiative and was not always accepted by workers. The scientific method spawned the discovery of the Hawthorne effect in the 1920s and 1930s. The Hawthorne effect occurs when people improve some aspect of their behavior or performance simply because they know they're being assessed. The Hawthorne effect was first identified when a series of experiments that came to be known as the Hawthorne studies were conducted on Western Electric Plant workers in Hawthorne, just outside of Chicago, to see the effects of a variety of factors, including individual versus group pay, incentive pay, breaks, and snacks on productivity. One of the working conditions tested at the Hawthorne plant was lighting. When they tested brighter lights, production increased. When they tested dimmer lights, production also increased. Researchers observed that productivity almost always improved after a lighting change, any change, but eventually returned to normal levels. Workers appeared to try to work harder when the lights were dimmed just because they knew they were being evaluated. George Elton Mayo, founder of the Human Relations Movement, initiated by the Hawthorne Studies, explained this finding by saying that workers tried harder because of the sympathy and interest of the observers. Mayo stated that the reason workers are more strongly motivated by informal things is that individuals have a deep psychological need to believe that their organization cares about them. Essentially, workers were more motivated when they believe their organization is open, concerned, and willing to listen. The Hawthorne studies prompted further investigation into the effects of social relations, motivation, communication, and employee satisfaction on factory productivity. Rather than viewing workers as interchangeable parts in mechanical organizations as the scientific management movement had done, the human relations movement viewed organizations as cooperative systems and treated workers' orientations, values, and feelings as important parts of organizational dynamics and performance. The human relations movement stressed the importance of human dimensions of work, including group relations that can be superseded by organizational norms and even an individual's self-interest. Harvard social work professor and management consultant Mary Parker Follett was known as the prophet of management because her ideas were ahead of her time. Follett discovered a variety of phenomenon including creativity exercises such as brainstorming and the groupthink effect of meetings. W. Edwards Deming is known as the guru of quality management. Deming taught Japanese industrialists statistical process control and quality concepts. His classic 1986 book describes how to do high-quality, productive, and satisfying work. Deming believed that removing fear from the workplace gives employees pride in their worksmanship and increases productivity. Deming also felt that when things go wrong, there's a 94% chance that the system, elements under management control including machinery and rules, rather than the worker, is the cause. He believed that making changes in response to normal variations was unwise, 
and that proper understanding of variation includes the mathematical certainty that variation will normally occur within a certain range. The total quality management movement initiated by Deming again highlights the importance of people, teamwork, and communication in organizations' success. This brief history helps to set the stage for an understanding of organizational behavior.